A concept that's really important to grasp as you get more and more advanced skills in Excel is custom formatting. Custom formatting allows us to really define how we want numbers and text to look in our worksheet. So in this first lesson, I'm going to talk through custom formatting so you understand what you're looking at and then you can start building your own really cool custom formats. So in this first lesson, we're just going to talk through custom formatting so you understand what it is, because in my experience, this is something that people tend to struggle with, but it's actually pretty easy once you break it down. Now, notice here that we have a very small table. We've got a list of sales agents. We have the sales that they've generated and the commission that they've achieved. Now, currently, these numbers kind of look a little bit untidy, and that is because if we go to the Home tab and take a look in the Number Formatting group, you can see I just have General Formatting applied. And General Formatting isn't really any specific formatting at all. Now, ordinarily, what most people would do here is they would select the sales values, they'd go up to the drop down, and then they'd probably choose, because these are sales, currency, or accounting format to make those look a little bit neater. Maybe we'd take the decimal places down. And we'd probably do something similar for the commission. Now, I'm just gonna undo, just to take those numbers back to how they were originally, because aside from these preset number formats that are built into Excel, if we go into more number formats, we have a custom group at the bottom. And this is where we can get really detailed about how we want our numbers to look. And what I find is that most people come into here and they start to scroll through this big list and they see all these hash symbols and all these dollar symbols, and it all looks quite complicated. So they generally tend to just cancel out of here and just use one of the presets. So let's take a little bit of time just to fully understand what we're looking at, because then it's just going to be a lot easier for you to create your own custom formats. Now, the first thing you need to understand about custom formatting, and if we go down to, let's just select this one here so you can see it in this type area. Custom formatting is divided into four parts, and each part specifies the format for a particular type of cell input. And each part is separated by a semicolon. So if you take a look at this just here, there's the semicolon. So everything before the semicolon, the first part, this defines how we want positive values to look in our spreadsheet. The next part after the semicolon, that defines how we want negative values to look in our spreadsheet. Now, this one only has two parts, so we're only defining positive and negative values. But if we scroll down a bit further, you can see we have some in here that contain all four parts. So with this one, this is the number formatting that controls what positive values look like. This is the number formatting that controls what negative values look like. And then we have another semicolon and a third part in here. So this controls what zero values look like in our spreadsheet. And the final part controls what text looks like. So we can effectively use different formatting for different types of input into our cells. So maybe I want the positive values in a selected range to show with a dollar symbol and two decimal places, but I want the negative values to show with no decimal places and to show in a red font. We could do all of this with custom formatting. And then maybe I want the zero values to show as a blank instead of a zero, and maybe I want the text to look a specific way. This is what you can use custom formatting for. So it's really important to understand that this is divided down into four parts. Now you don't necessarily have to use all four parts. It really depends on the, the data that you're using. Now, another thing that tends to throw people off are these hash symbols and zeros. Now these are placeholders. And if you take a look, I've selected this one just here. In the sample above, you can see what the number is going to look like if I was to use this custom format. So if you compare this number to what we actually have in the selected cell, you can see that this formatting is basically going to add a comma separator into there. In the worksheet, we don't have a comma separator currently. And the hash symbols and the zero are effectively placeholders for numbers. The only difference between these two is that the hash symbol is a variable placeholder, whereas the zero is a fixed placeholder. So something really simple I could do here is if I wanted to have this formatting here with the comma separator, but I also wanted a dollar symbol on the front there, I could simply come down to my custom format and add a dollar symbol 
and you can see the sample updates when I click on OK, it's going to apply that formatting to the cell. Let's undo. So this time I'm going to select the sales column. Let's go into custom and I'm going to choose a custom format. So if I scroll all the way down, I want this one just here. So this is going to put a dollar symbol on the front and a comma separator. Let's click on OK to apply that custom format. Now, what about this just here? Again, I have some numbers, but I also have some zero values in here. So let's go to custom formatting. This time I'm going to press control one keyboard shortcut to jump there quickly. Let's go to custom. And this time I want to have my numbers formatted in the same way, my positive values, I should say. So I want them like that. But because I have zero values in here, I want to apply a formatting for those. So remember, we need to press semicolon. That's going to move us on to the next position, which is how we want negative values to be formatted. Now, I don't have any negative values in my selected cell range, so I can press semicolon again, which will move me on to the next part, which is how I want zeros to be formatted. So maybe instead of a zero, I wanted to say no commission. I could type into quote marks, no commission, click on OK, and let's widen this column out. And there you go. You can see that wherever we have a zero, we now have text instead. What about this example below? This is going to help illustrate to you the difference between those hash symbols and zeros. You can see here I have some order numbers in column one, but these order numbers are very inconsistent in their length. So we've got order number 100, 5, 2000, 560, so on and so forth. But maybe I want all of these to be the same length. Maybe they need to be five characters long. Now, if I wanted to change the first one here to five characters, it would make sense to put a zero zero on the front because the number is still effectively going to be 100. But if I was to double click here and try and add two zeros, Excel doesn't really like leading zeros. So what I could do is select this cell range, control one, go to custom. And because these are all positive values, what I could do here is I could say that I want five fixed spaces, for example. So I would need to use zeros because zeros represent fixed placeholders. One, two, three, four, five. You can see in the sample above, I'm now getting exactly what I want. So if I click on OK, the zero being fixed will force everything to be exactly the same length. Now, if I was to do the same thing, but use hash symbols instead, Notice the difference. So let's type in one, two, three, four, five, click on OK. It just takes us back to how it was before because these are variable, they can change. So that is the main difference between fixed and variable placeholders. And just to finish off this lesson, because we do have another lesson coming up where you can see custom formatting in action, let's take a look at this sales column just here because we have some minus values. So let's press control one. Let's jump into custom. So in here, I want to format positive and negative values. So as we know, positive values are in the first position. Maybe I want the 500 to display. Let's choose this one with two decimal places after it. And let's add a dollar symbol at the front here. And now I want to define how I want my negative numbers to look. Now, I basically want them to look exactly the same, but I want them to show in red. So I can copy this formatting, control C, and just paste it in. And all I need to add on the front here is in brackets, we can add the color that we want to use. So I'm going to add in red. And those are square brackets, not curly brackets. Let's click on OK, and you can see everything updates, and we have the result that we were expecting. So those are the basics of how custom formatting works. In the next lesson, we're going to explore this a little bit further and we're going to take a look at a really nice example. So I'll see you over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.